Welcome to, the, uh, to a new episode on my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Tobias Friedrich and I'm here with Mike Bartik uh, in the Crystal Blue Resort. And over the last past week we did a, ni a few nice uh, blackwater dives and because I'm getting questions on uh, what's blackwater diving at all, what you, you, do you do then, uh, what, what uh, kind of diving is that uh, uh, quite often actually. I would like to explain it quite shortly. Uh, and Mike is like the perfect person for it because because he's like the master of uh, blackwater diving, so you should check out his uh, Instagram account, which is called Dive CBR. Um, and he's got a really nice portfolio of all kinds of blackwater stuff and nice things. So if you check that out, and if you're not addicted yet to it, I would just try it out one time. Um, best would be here at Nanila, of course. Uh, at Crystal Brew Resort. At the Crystal Brew Resort, yeah, to mention it one more time. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here. Yes. And uh, no, but you can actually do that uh, all over the world, the blackwater diving. And what, what's blackwater diving actually at all? And it's, it's, it's meant to be like the the um, the largest vertical migration of animals in the world, right? Yes, plankton. So it, of plankton, which is coming up from a really deep water, like over 200 meters, up to the surface in the night to feed on the nutrition on the rich water which is on the surface. Yes. So this is our chance to go there and to photograph these nice subjects, which are juvenile, 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 sorry, <laughs> juvenile. Uh, animals and uh, larvae, uh, still in larvae status, status before they are settling onto the reef. And this is like super interesting because you don't get it usually, um, of course, on the reefs. Yeah, it's like a different kind of status of the animal. And this is like kind of highly addictive. Right. Right? Oh, yeah. it's extremely um, addictive, especially when once you see one of these subjects for the first time. Yeah, what really makes it different from a standard night dive or standard macro dive is that you're in open water, offshore, and you get to witness that vertical migration firsthand. And uh, so you have two different kinds of subjects, just to break it in half, really. You have subjects that will live their entire lives as plankton. Uh, jellyfish, comb jellies, tinafores, different kinds of things like that, uh, pteropods. And then you have the subjects that are going to settle onto the sand and the, and the slopes, octopus, flat fish, uh, different types of uh, fish that will school up. And so you have the opportunity to see the, the different kinds of layers of life uh, that you ordinarily wouldn't see on a regular night dive or any other type of dive. So black water dive takes place offshore at night. Yeah. And what do you do to attract these, uh, these animals? Good question. So at night uh, we use these high powered lights uh, to attract planktons. Uh, this is a 10,000 lumen light. And I have a, a whole variety of other lights that we use, approximately 30,000 lumens of light on a down line that we have. And um, we, we put that out on a, a, a mooring ball and we drift with it. And those lights attract planktons. So the planktons, like you said, the planktons come up for the vertical migration pattern. So they're attracted to that. It helps you see underwater, plus a lot of the, the uh, other um, Subjects like the juvenile larvae and so forth will also be attracted to those lights. So it offers two kinds of things. One is it attracts the plankton, and two it gives the divers visual reference. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's basically uh, you're on a long line, like in a, with a with a buoy attached on the top on the surface, which is floating. Then there's a long line, and there Correct. are several lights and several depth. Uh, Correct. Every depth. five meters, we yeah. put the, we put the light base, and we use standard strobe arms. Uh, in that, in that, uh, on that line, which is very secure, yeah. and uh, we put two lights on each one of those little bays all the way down. So it gives you a strong visual reference of not only your depth, but uh, having a light source underwater at night so you can see it and then realize, oh, that's that's my, my home. And is it the more light you have, the more lumen you have, the better it is, or what? Well, that's that's kind of gone back and forth a little bit because a lot of these subjects, you know. Are, are sensitive to light. So if you have too much light, it could actually repel them. Uh, and then there's the idea of the color of the light. So we like to use a combination of warm and white light. So, you know, for one, you want to attract the subjects, but two, you also want to have a safety um, net for your own guests. You want them to have the feeling that, you know, they know where the, the line is at all times. 
And safety is actually a good point because um, what I understood that's really the most important point that's is right. to detach the buoy from the boat and not to attach boat because the boat would drift in the wind in another direction that the buoy would uh, drift with you in the current. So that's, that's correct. Super unsafe to attach the, the buoy to it the is. boat because you're, then you're drifting away that's in right. another direction that's from right. the boat and you yeah. lose the side of the buoy. Very quickly. And with the with, with if you drift in the current in the current with the buoy with the lights, then you can still easily shoot, right? Yeah, you do. Everything moves at the same speed, so you don't you don't even realize that you're moving. There's no there's no reference to any reef or any yeah. uh, static substrate, so you just you never even feel like you're moving. Yeah. And uh, with the boat, of course, the wind blows it one way, the currents move it another, and you become separated very quickly. And what would you say is the best way how to approach the subjects in the water? Well, uh, two ways. One, I like to use a handheld torch so I can hunt in the water. And then the second is um, once I see my subject that I want to work with, I'll approach it slowly. And then at that point, I'll let my modeling light or focus light take over so I can photograph the subject. Yeah. A lot of the subjects will begin to spin or uh, are very sensitive to your own pressure wave. So if you approach them too quickly, that of course that pressure wave will make the subject collapse or spin around. So uh, fast body movements underwater is very uh, is, is you know I suggest people not to do that. Yeah. Just take your time. Try to use the subject's momentum and work with it as it drifts, and you'll have better success. Okay, great. Yeah. And so for the for the light to search, I understand that the spotlight would be best, right? That's right? correct. You just have a, like a small spot. Otherwise, the, that great beam is like if you have your bright lights on in in, in the fog when you're driving a car, right? Yes. You, you can't see anything you can't but see with past the light. small spots. Then you can really see and hunt for the critters, and then you go. Uh, with your camera towards it and, uh, and shoot it. And yes. what would be like the best uh, stroke position uh, to, to shoot them to avoid all the... Because there's a lot of backscatter at the yeah. same time in, in, in black water, of course, because all the plankton is up there and it attracts the light, all that small stuff uh, yeah. coming into it. And yeah, and your photos can get pretty sloppy uh, pretty fast. You can have a lot of backscatter, of course. The critical backscatter really is damaging to the photo. So you have to kind of work your strobe angles uh, to avoid getting too much backscatter. So I'll show you a couple of the, the strobe angles that I like the most. And uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive because you would think, hey, that strobe angle, I'm gonna get nothing but backscatter. But you'd be surprised, all right? So first, I'll talk about this first strobe angle. So I like to keep my strobes uh, close to my housing. I use a 60 millimeter lens. Even on a uh, uh, full frame camera, I use a 60 millimeter lens. This allows me to get very close to my subject. All right? So my strobes are here. I'm flashing my subject very closely. I increase my ISO to about uh, 400, and I can turn my strobe power down to half. This allows me to photograph very quickly the subject, and because the low power, it allows the strobes to recycle very fast. And then also the 60 millimeter lens lets me get very close. Mm -hmm. So the combination is very, very effective for, for black water uh, photography. And what would you say in terms of settings? What would be, would be the, the best, like the f-stop or the, the, the shutter speed? What would be the best to, right. to choose? So shutter speed, I always prefer to shoot as fast as I can, uh, your fastest sync speed, or 1 over 200. That's my, that's my, my suggested setting, 1 over 200. Uh, ISO 400 and uh, f-stop of f18 and, and higher. If the subjects are too reflective, you can just increase your f-stop a little bit, and and that'll allow you to uh, to retain the, the brights and the whites of the subject. Now, if you have a full frame camera, not full frame. Uh, if you have a mirrorless camera, uh, I suggest starting with your f-stop around f14, and compact cameras around f5.1. Yeah. So very okay. And but <clears throat> would you would you say that for the start would be also okay? Like if somebody only got a full frame camera, and for example, I I, I only have a full frame camera and Canon uh, only does only 100 does millimeter. 100 millimeter yeah. for that, that that would be okay as well for the start, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Canon full frame that's that's been a challenge for a lot of shooters because they can't get as close. But you know, the 100 millimeter and a full frame. You still can approach your subjects pretty close, and if you're used to using that setup, then you won't have any problem. The biggest challenge isn't actually photographing the subject, it's tracking it in the viewfinder. Mm 
and keeping track of that subject as it moves. So that's why I, I recommend for people to have a wider angle of view. But, you know, for, for guests that um, don't have that luxury or are shooting the can of full frame at the 100, it's still doable. You know, I have a lot of guests that do it. Even, even the mirrorless 90 millimeters, uh, I guess still shooting with those and, and doing very well. Yeah. Okay, great photos. <clears throat> and do you also use diopters? Uh, do I don't. I don't use diopters because I, I want the depth of field of the subject. You know, I'm really a natural history shooter at heart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's other ways to make creative images underwater. And um, so, you know, I really, that being said, I really want to retain the natural aspects of the subject when I'm shooting them because they're so unique. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're difficult to, to identify correctly to start with. So I really want to retain the natural essence of the subject to the, my greatest ability. And that's usually done with the higher f stop. OK, great. Yeah. And just talking quickly about uh, focus lights, uh -huh. because um, I think many people would have a question on which focus light do I use for black water dives, or is it like a special one? Or what would you recommend as a focus light, and why? OK. So I, I recommend, you know, it's, I'm not brand specific, but I, I do use Kraken lights. I like the light quality. Um, what's most important is that your light has a nice, soft, wide beam. Okay, so different from the torch that I use with my hand. The handheld torch should be a tight beam so I can hunt through the water. But my focus light should be a nice, soft, wide beam. And this is going to be trained normally down over my lens only. This allows me to look over the top of my camera and to hunt and to swim around and, and look for things in the water column. Once I see it, I will approach my subject in a way that then now allows my focus light to take over and then I, I can uh, begin to take photos that way. So I rarely use my camera to hunt. I, I keep everything as stationary as I possibly can. Once I get into the water, I take a, a few test shots, adjust my lights, and then I rarely readjust it. So, yeah, I, that's, that's what I recommend. Excellent, yeah. So I think we covered a lot of uh, things already um, during, during the talk already, and um, you are also doing workshops uh, for Blackwater Dive specific. Um, what, what I think is great, because in these workshops you, uh, you're specifically doing two Blackwater Dives each night, so yes. you're just staying out there. Uh, doing your surface break in between and then doing another black water dive which right. you can actually get the most out of it, right? In, yeah. in one week, so that's really great. Yeah, and we like to plan those around the full tide, so, uh, you know, the, the tide movement. So, um, you know, it's nice to be able to dive on the first portion of the high tide peak and then the first portion of the outgoing tide peak. So you can really get a different mix of subjects. So, uh, it's very interesting. A lot of natural photo ops, and I think for me it's the ultimate uh, opportunity for shooting new subjects. Excellent. Yeah, and also, I, I uh, what I heard is like the best times just just after new moon. Correct. Uh, it's like the best time to hunt because then the critters gain a lot because there's not so much light from the moon and that's right. That's to exactly the, right to the light exactly. of right, of the bull. Yeah. yeah. So well, I think um, or I hope you got uh, a lot of. Um, uh, things now explained about blackwater diving and I can just recommend uh, even though if you're not sure just to try it out somewhere when you're there especially if you're in Anilao you should definitely try it out uh, that's really recommended I'm also trying to set up uh, because I like it now so much to try to set up for next year for maybe uh, we were talking about January 2020, uh, 2020 a uh, group trip uh, to come to here. So feel free to also ask me or to contact Mike um, directly at the Crystal Blue Resort. So thank you very much, Mike, for having me here. Right. It was really thank a pleasure you. diving with yeah, you. Yeah, it's been great. Great, great fun. A lot of fun. Uh, I wish you could have been here earlier, so we yeah. could have done we're more. Stay another week. Yeah, exactly. Or I stay one more week, yeah. right? But I have to go to the boat show tomorrow uh, and then uh, do some work as well but next time we'll be hopefully spread the load yes exactly yeah. yeah so thanks and please subscribe and like and also like uh, mike's instagram account and uh, and the resort and that will help us um, all a lot so thank you very much and uh, see you next time thank you um, i'm here at the moment at the crystal uh, Blue. No, crystal. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the first audio yes. already. Huh? Yes. It's like the crystal. Uh, I see the crystal sign. <laughs> crystal. It's like oh, crystal. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? It's just the, the big sign is just the next one. Oh my god. <clears throat> Not that I'm manly. <laughs>
Manly man. Cut, please, cut. <coughs> Ready and action. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Ready, baby? She's ready. Yeah, yeah. She's 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 too. Welcome. Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's a wrap.